more day. thing to be in the company of my sisters. I thank each and every one of you for making it a priority to be here today. Uh, again, my name is Ayanna Presley. For those of you who reside in the city of Boston, I have the humbling honor of serving as one of your four citywide city councilors. Uh, in my bio, I referenced that, that I'm the first woman of color to serve on that body. Actually, it's 102 year history. And I'm always a little uncomfortable being in But also, I don't want you to clap and celebrate me. Although I do recognize that it is a personal achievement, I hope you feel some stake hold, and when you clap, you're clapping for yourselves, because it is a collective and shared victory. And so I hope that you all feel empowered uh, by the fact that I am on that body. Uh, and let me just uh, you know, remind you what we've accomplished together. So the first woman of color to serve on this body is 102 year history. Currently the only woman serving on that 13 member body. And the first woman in 30 years to top the ticket. <laughs> the last woman to do that was Louise Day Hicks. That was a very different day. Um, so I hope uh, you know that although it is my honor to represent 22 neighborhoods, 617,000 people, that I belong to you first. I love what I get to do every day to actualize my values, and I know that's why you're all here today as well, to actualize your values. And so I'd be remiss if I didn't immediately thank Maria Jo Ruiz. often about the fact that in politics we have to say people who are supportive I and O in name only Maria Jo Deleeds has never been that person. She knows that support is a verb and it's a demonstrated action and so I thank her for her vision and all of the board members could you stand because we've come a long way. Everybody remember these marathon communities financially investing. You know, I'm fortunate to be the founding member of and supported by uh, many organizations dedicated to diversifying the political pipeline. And I'll continue to support them. The National Political Caucus, Emerge Massachusetts, the Center for Women in Politics and Public Policy. But this initiative here is meeting a need, one that had gone overlooked for far too long, and that is to address the unique challenges facing us as progressive women of color. Our life circumstances, the media biases, voter stereotyping, all of which compound our ability to raise money and can impact our viability as a candidate. So this organization is meeting that very specific need and gap. One of my sheroes, Shirley Chisholm once said that she did not want to be remembered as the first black woman elected to the Congress. She did not want to be remembered as the first black woman to run for the U.S. presidency. She simply wanted to be remembered as a black woman who dared to be herself. dare to be ourselves. And that's why this is so very important. We know that, diverse, that government is stronger and more effective when it reflects the people that it serves. We all benefit from diversity, that equity in perspective. You know, we talk often about the obstacles and impediments facing us as women in the world, and in particular in embarking upon a political career. But I don't want to only focus on the liabilities. What of our assets, our stories, our perspective? As women in government, we may not remember all of your names, but we will remember your stories. 
and carry them with us in those marble halls every day. Well, the state house is marble, not city hall, but <laughs> it's a whole other uh, subject. Um, but the point is, those stories, that perspective is so very important because it informs our values, which in turn informs our agenda and our priorities. We not only need a dialogue in the discourse, and I do want to say when we're talking about diversity, it's a diversity of perspective and opinion and thought. But not only do we bring a diversity in discourse, we bring a diversity in how we achieve transformative and sustainable change. We do things differently. We bring something different. The ability to coalition build, to effectively communicate, to facilitate. I remember during my first campaign when I was seeking the endorsement of a newspaper that I won't name, uh, the reporter said to me, I've been in a number of rooms with you. I think uh, you're a decent communicator and probably a good facilitator, but I'm not sure that's what a city councilor does. I happen to believe that uh, those skills uh, make one an effective public servant and are qualities that women uniquely possess. In particular, our ability to coalition build, and more importantly, our ability to actively listen and not just wait for the other person to finish talking. That, actively, that ability to actively listen informs our activism and our advocacy and our policies. Senator Chang Diaz gave an example, and I'll give one. It's a good segue because it's why I can't stay here for the duration. Uh, when I leave here, I'll be going to convene a hearing about our predatory for-profit colleges. My work in broad strokes is about breaking cycles of poverty, and we can't do that if we're not making sure that there's access to education to support people and being employed. These for-profit colleges, 80% of their monies are invested in their marketing and not in the classroom. And they are going after, they are marketing and targeting peoples and families uh, who are eligible for federal benefits. Our veterans, our single parents and households, um, adults uh, who graduated from high school but are pursuing college labor and life, who simply want to do the right thing and get on a bridge and a pathway to economic sufficiency. Ensnared in a downward spiral of loan default, often attaining certificates and degrees that won't even support them in being gainfully employed. I'm taking that issue up because I actively listen to the stories of many women who have been exploited and victimized by these colleges. And so again, this is something that we do uniquely as women. We not only bring the diversity in the discourse, but we bring the diversity in how we achieve meaningful and transformative change. And so it's for all these reasons we need you, and we need you sorely. And it's why I came here today to say thank you, to celebrate you, and to encourage all of you to dare to be yourself. But I'd be remiss if I didn't also say that I'd like to issue a challenge to you. Coming together is good. Staying together is great and necessary. Please continue to be sisters to one another outside of this room. Especially as women of color, too often it feels, given the disparate impact of so many social issues, that we are synchronized, sort of participating in a synchronized drowning, when we need to be participating in a unified advocacy and advancement. So I thank you for the opportunity to say a few words.